So welcome back to a cold and rainy morning here in western Pennsylvania. I returned home from Colorado late last night. I'm not sure what I'm going to get into today. We'll have to see what the weather does. It does look like the clouds are starting to break some, so we'll see what happens. But anyway, this morning, we're going to take this opportunity to uh, talk about my experience with Ford Motor Company. As many of you know, uh, we ordered a new Ford Bronco a while back. There's been a lot of different delays, but recently it has turned into a complete dumpster fire. So today we're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly with my experiences with Ford Motor Company. Now, first off, let's talk about the good that comes from Ford Motor Company. And this truck right here is a great example of that. I absolutely love this truck. It's a 2019 F-150 Lariat. I've had it for a couple years now. It's got the 3.5 twin turbo EcoBoost, loads of power, great mileage. On that trip to Colorado, we got almost 20 miles per gallon. It's got a huge fuel tank. I think it's a 35 gallon tank. So you can go well over 600 miles without having to stop for fuel. Uh, this is a very well-rounded vehicle. We use it for everything. You know, before I left on my trip, I was pulling a dump trailer with this. And then me and my buddy hopped in it, drive to the, almost the other side of the country on a hunting trip. Uh, Melissa and I go out to dinner in this truck. It's just been a fantastic vehicle. And I've had several F-150s. Matter of fact, I've been a pretty loyal uh, Ford customer. I had a Ford Excursion, an F-350. We had an Expedition, an Explorer. All in all, we've had really good luck with Ford products. I think the only one we had any real trouble with was the... Uh, Ford Explorer had some transmission issues around 150,000 miles, but all in all, I've had great luck and great success with Ford products. Now, with that being said, you know, I think it's safe to say I'm kind of a Ford guy. I mean, I do like Jeeps. We've got that 2021 Rubicon. I like Jeeps as well. And I've always liked the Ford Bronco from back in the day. Always wanted one, never had one. So I was pretty excited to hear, you know, that Ford was going to bring the Bronco back. Well, I reserved the Bronco the first day that you could reserve them, and that was about a year and a half ago. And then you could actually order them in January. Uh, originally, it was going to be back in December of 2020. Yeah, December 2020, it got pushed to January. So I ordered it as soon as I could, and I kind of sat back and waited. Then after a few months, I got an email from Ford saying our Bronco was scheduled to be built, which is good news, right? But we all know the last year and a half or so, there's been a lot of problems with supply chain issues and everything else, and there were some delays. Not one, not two. There's at least three times the scheduled for production date change, possibly four times, but it finally went into production sometime the end of June, first week of July. Then I actually got an email from Ford saying our Bronco was built and it was being prepared to be shipped. So at that point, I'm thinking this is actually going to happen and the new Bronco would arrive in the next week or two. Well, that never did happen. So I waited a little bit and I contacted the dealer. They did their best to try to figure out what the problem was, but they couldn't get any information from Ford other than it was delayed again. So after a few more weeks and not knowing what was going on and not being able to get any answers from Ford, I started looking around online trying to figure out what the problem was. And sure enough, I found my answer on an online forum. A lot of people were talking about the hardtop roof issues that Ford was having. It sounded like it was mostly a cosmetic problem, uh, some delamination, and just some different quality issues with the new roof. Now, I didn't hear that from Ford. I found it online. Well, sure enough, about a month after that, Ford sent an email out kind of fessing up to the problem saying, hey, we've got this problem with the roofs. We're going to take care of it. We're getting all geared up to replace all the roofs on all the Broncos. All right, so Melissa just joined us, but I was explaining, you know, how Ford kind of fessed up to the quality control issues on the new roof and that they're going to fix them all. Well, that was, uh, I don't even know when that was, back in September. Right. Yeah, probably in September we got that email at that point. And they were going to replace the ones that were sitting the longest first, which was one of ours. So right. back in, you know, end of June, 1st of July, our Bronco was actually built. Right. And then they sent it to a place that they called Dirt Mountain. Now, Ford doesn't call it Dirt Mountain, but that's what the guys online were calling it. It's this huge parking lot. There's a big pile of dirt in the middle of it. 
and they put all these Broncos. I saw some pictures that looked like thousands of them. I don't know how many. And we've but had tons of people send us. But they're all sitting there waiting for a roof replacement. Right. So, all the Broncos, they're sitting there waiting for a roof replacement, right? Well, we got a confirmation from Ford uh, that our roof was going to be replaced. And then we got another email saying that our Bronco was built for the second time, basically, uh, September 28th. And at that point, I thought, this is it, finally happening, because they even said it's going to be delivered between October 6th and October 12th. Well, I left for my trip out west on the 13th, and so the plan was, you know, Melissa and Eva, they're sharing the Jeep. I would be taking my truck to Colorado, and Melissa would have the new Bronco, and everything would work out just fine. Well, the 13th kind of came and went, and no Bronco and didn't hear anything because I was out west and kind of out of the loop a little bit. So I made some phone calls there earlier this week and it just turned into a big mess, it really did. I called Ford Motor Company, they have a number that you can call to check on the status of, the, of a vehicle and they were no help at all, actually. Uh, the guy was telling me, all I have here is saying it's supposed to be delivered by the 12th and it wasn't and he couldn't tell me anything else and uh, so I called my dealer. He was on the phone trying to figure out what was going on. And long story short, because I've been rambling about this long enough, it didn't show up. They have no idea where it is, when it's going to be done. Uh, I'm sure there's another issue or another problem. And it'll probably be another month or two and Ford will come clean and explain what this issue is. But so with all that being said, uh, we're actually in the market for a new vehicle right now. We're going out right now. I haven't given up hope entirely on the Bronco. Uh, if it comes in before we buy something else, that's great. If not, it's not the end of the world. Uh, it's just been a one thing after another, and they don't seem to, they don't really care, you know, and it's just, you know, whatever. They can do whatever they want. So we're headed out today, try to find something else, but it's just not as easy as it used to be. You know, everything's kind of hard to get. What's frustrating is, though, is that we waited, you know, basically a year and a half and it's just one delay after another. The biggest problem that they have, in my opinion, is is their communication. Uh, you know, they build a fantastic product, they do. And I know they're having some issues with the Bronco. I've always loved Fords, we've had good luck with them. You know, they're engineers, designers, all the guys working on the line, you know, building these things, they do a great job. But somewhere up in the big office buildings, everything just went off the tracks, it really is. You know, people are adults, they understand things happen. You know, some people get mad and nasty or whatever. We don't do that. You just need to tell people the truth, and uh, they don't do that at all. They don't seem to care. So what we're doing right now, we're heading out looking for a new vehicle. I don't know if we'll find anything today or not. Uh, we're just going to see. So what are your thoughts, Melissa? You know, we've talked about this, but I can send a package from here to the other side of the road, and I can track it. Why can't you track the vehicle? Yeah, they don't know where a 5,500 pound truck I'm is. Like, that's not okay. So, I don't know. It just has these little red flags are just popping up that maybe I need to look at something else. <laughs> yeah. So, that's where we're headed right now. We're not sure what we're getting, but Melissa has a few ideas and so do I. So, uh, we'll report back in a bit. All right. We are pulling into a Toyota dealer of all places. Yeah, right here. Toyota, Melissa. This was all her idea. The TRD. This one is a TRD. They all are here. Well, no, no, not all. Is this one you saw online here? I think so, yeah. No, this is a trail edition. Trail edition. I don't know much about these. Look at them online. All right, we just left the uh, Toyota dealer. We looked at some uh, Toyota 4Runners. They have a couple TRD Pros coming in, maybe in the next couple weeks or so. But uh, yeah, they're a pretty nice vehicle. This is a picture on the paper he printed out because they don't have any brochures. Yeah, no brochures. Any There's one right there, Melissa. Oh, yeah. See? Right in traffic. So we're going to do some checking up on these because we don't know enough about them, but we'll see. Right. All right. We are back at the house. So we looked at the uh, Toyotas. What do you think of them, Melissa? 
It's the TDR. Is that right? Yeah, TDR Pro. Or TRD. Or TRD. They're, um, yeah, I like them. They're good, good vehicles. Seem kind of small nice. inside, huh? I think that's the only thing that I wouldn't like is it was more narrow. And then one thing about the Jeep is you're not, you're not packed in. You're not narrow. You're wide. And, um, yeah, so. We're going to think about it. We're going to, uh, we just don't know enough about them. So we're going to do a little research online and we're going to keep looking. Uh, and that's kind of the plan. If we can find something, and even these, what did he say? They don't have any right now. Yeah. They're, they're in, in transit right now. They're probably about a month out. And surprisingly, you can't order one. I was, no. you got to pick from what they have coming or something, which yeah. I thought was odd as well. Right. And they only make like four colors, which are of the odd. TRD. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they're outdoorsy colors. They were nice colors. I like them. Yeah. But, um, yeah, you know, just, you just know when you know. And I don't know that that's the car for me. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to keep looking. So I'm not even sure what I'm going to call this video. Maybe something like the good and the bad, the ugly or something like that. <laughs> because I just want to be clear. I am very, I, I like Ford vehicles. I do. We've had great luck with Fords over the years. And, you know, we should actually call it the great, the bad, and the ugly. Because I love their products. Like I said, the designers, the engineers, the people that build them. In my opinion, I, you know, there's lemons everywhere. But in my opinion, they make a really good vehicle. Uh, that would be the great, the bad, the whole rollout of the Bronco was, was, is bad. It really is. It's uh, it was a swing and a miss and the ugly part or the most pathetic is the lack of communication. Uh, they, you know, they just don't seem to care. So that's what I would consider the good and bad and the ugly. I think that's what I'll call this video. So like we said, that's what the plan is. We're going to look for something else. If the Bronco shows up in the next week or two before we can get something else, we'll go with that. We're just going to have to wait and see, but, uh, you know, yeah. it is what it is. A lot of people have, you know, a lot bigger problems in the world, but we're just starting to feel as though we wasted too much time yeah. on this thing, waiting and waiting and all that stuff and all the back and forth and not getting anywhere. And I just well, never understood because it's like, you know, say you had somebody remodeling your kitchen and they, they said it was done, but it's not. And you said, when are you going to be done? And they just say, I have no idea. That's pretty right. much, it's kind of like where it's at. So. Yeah, because it's caused an inconvenience in our family situation and the dynamics of the way we run our schedules. Yeah. Where now I'm inconveniencing my son by borrowing his car. Like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. the decision making has been, okay, this is what we want, but it's gone on too long where now we're... Yeah. Like, we are inconvenienced and need to right. make another decision. So hopefully they get their act together, but uh, if not, whatever. We can't do much about it. So uh, like I always say, if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like button, click subscribe, and share them with your friends. Yeah. Thanks.